Hello you action figure enthusiasts out there, JC here with Salome and we're coming at you with another TNI news video. We've got a lot to cover today so let's jump right into it. And first thing I wanted to share with you guys is some news on the Transformers front. So first of all, uh, not the last news video but the video before that I believe, I talked about how a new Transformer animated series was in the works and in that report I had said that it was looking like it was not going to be based on the movies. Unfortunately now it's looking like I was wrong on that and in fact this looks like this animated project looks like is going to be uh, based uh, some type of prequel. Anyway, it looks like it's going to be some type of prequel based on the movie universe, only in animated form. So uh, my interest for it just kind of went out the window. But if you're a, a movie Transformer Universe fan, then this might be something that will interest you. And then also on the movie front for Transformers, a release date for another live action film has been announced that is going to be taking place on in June 2022. June 24th is the actual date. Now, it's unclear whether this is going to be the rumored Beast Wars reboot project that's been in the works, a, a, a live action version of Beast Wars, or if this is going to be a sequel to the Bumblebee movie. Um, basically, both movies, apparently both projects are in the running for this June uh, 2022 release date, and we'll have to wait and see. My, I'm hoping it's the Beast Wars, but most likely it'll probably end up being a sequel to the Bumblebee movie, so... Um, you know, for me, at least we have the uh, Netflix Transformers animated series coming this summer. Um, I, I am definitely looking forward to that. Now, in Transformer toy news, we got some official images from Takara Tommy for their upcoming MP51 RC figure. So these new images show off that the figure is looking pretty much the same from what we saw. We originally saw this figure on display at some of the overseas conventions earlier in the year and doesn't look like much has changed. She has a couple different weapons. She has a pistol, which also has a holster for her to use, and then um, she also comes with a rifle. There's some blast effects that will attach to both of those weapons. In her car mode, she has those uh, that spike thing that'll come out the side that we would see in the cartoon, uh, so she could mess with other vehicles or what have you that come up beside her. And you, know, you can see the figure has actually got some pretty good articulation based on these images. So, oh, and she also has the feature where the visor will come down. She used it in the Transformers animated movie where she was looking, uh, I think, to see if Hot Rod and, and, and Daniel were going to make it back to the headquarters. So she has that feature as well. So overall, to me, it looks pretty cool. I know some of the fans out there had wanted uh, some changes to make, be made to the mold, but it looks like they're going to go forward with how we saw it at the convention and should be going up. This figure should be going up for pre-order pretty soon at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. Now switching gears to Masters of the Universe. So first we have an update from Kevin Smith on his new Masters of the Universe Revelation animated series coming to Netflix next year. So he recently did an interview with the folks at comicbook.com. He told folks there that uh, things were still on track for the series to air sometime next year. We don't have a specific release date. He also told them, um, keeping in mind that this is a continuation of the Filmation series, the original 80s Filmation series, and this is supposed to be a direct continuation of that that was revealed during PowerCon last year. And in the interview, uh, Smith tells uh, them that uh, don't expect any major redesigns of characters from how they appeared in the old series. You know, updated animation, obviously, but the actual designs of the characters should be pretty much on par with how they appeared in the original series. But then he goes on to say that um, there's going to be some type of, you know, essentially they're going to pick up right where that series ended where everything was you know pretty much on par with that series but then there's going to be some kind of uh, catastrophe or major event that happens that changes everything that's going to change the tone of the series and then that's where they're essentially going to be taking it from there so and at that point whether the characters get new designs or not i don't know probably just for toy purposes we'll see some uh, design changes but again, uh, some kind of big uh, catastrophic event's going to happen and, and, and change everything. And that's really where this new story is going to take us. So to me, it definitely sounds interesting. I look forward to seeing more on this. 
and you know hopefully we will get an actual release date for this series uh, pretty soon. Now, I don't have anything major on the toy front other than uh, Brian Flynn over at Super 7 recently released this new image of the Snake Mountain playset that was you know funded through Kickstarter. So this uh, new image shows off the final sample of the playset that's going to be sent off for actual production. So this is pretty much how it should look when you when you when it actually arrives on your doorstep, assuming you actually you know purchased it through the Kickstarter. And then he also showed off this new poster that's going to be included with the the Snake Mountain playset. Uh, by Jason uh, Edmiston, I, I think I pronounced that right. It's a 40 inch by 40 inch poster, so it's a really big poster. So that's kind of cool. And again, that's gonna be included with the play set. Now, if you did miss out on the Kickstarter, you can actually still purchase it at some retailers like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. They do actually have it available. It's a little more expensive than what it costs through the Kickstarter. But, you know, if you're kicking yourself or missing it and you want to get it now and you're willing to put the money down, it is actually still available for purchase. For you Star Wars fans, the folks at Yak Face were able to dig up listings for what appears to be a third wave of vintage collection, or not vintage collection, but Black Series, six inch Black Series figures on the vintage Empire Strikes Back card backs. So the Empire Strikes Back wave, there's going to be a third one, it looks like. Now, this had been rumored before, but now we have these listings showing up in the Walmart uh, website. And uh, go over the figures that are slated for this wave. It looks like we're going to be getting a Snow Trooper. So unlike the second wave that actually had some new figures, the um, Rebel, Snow, uh, Rebel Soldier and the Luke Skywalker and Snow Speeder outfit, which actually dis differed from his X-Wing outfit, that he had in the first movie. Um, those two are actually new figures. However, if, if you don't want to get them on the Empire Strikes Back card backs, um, they will be eventually available in the regular Black Series line as well. So, but with these uh, third uh, wave figures, and the second wave and the first wave are out on shelves now, if, if you're trying to get your hands on those. Again, these are the six inch Black Series figures with the Empire Strikes Back Kenner Light card backs. And then it looks like there's gonna be a third wave that includes a Snow Trooper, uh, Dagobah Luke Skywalker. I'm assuming that's probably just going to be the same Dagobah Luke Skywalker that we're getting in the two pack with Yoda, only it won't have Yoda in the backpack. Uh, maybe some other minor differences. I don't know, but probably pretty much just the Dagobah Luke now on a uh, uh, Kenner like uh, card back. So if you don't want to get the Yoda figure, if you don't want to buy the two pack, you'll have another uh, basically chance to get the Luke Skywalker figure, it looks like. Then we're getting another uh, uh, Chewbacca figure, Boba Fett and Darth Vader. And again, I'm assuming all those figures are reissues from the ones that we've seen in the regular Black Series line. They're all just now gonna be on the Empire Strikes Back card backs. And these um, look like are probably gonna be, they're gonna be available everywhere, not just Walmart, and uh, probably will be going up for pre-order in the, in the fairly uh, near future. For you Marvel fans, I don't have too much for you today. However, we've got a little more details on that Deadpool Marvel Legend roleplay item that I talked about a couple of news videos ago. So there is a listing that is now shown up on the Amazon France website that lists it simply as the Deadpool Interactive Premium English Speaking Head. So it does look like it's going to be a head. Um, still unclear if it's just a straight up Deadpool head or if it's maybe head pool. Based on the description, it's looking like it's just a straight up uh, Deadpool head that, that talks. Probably says funny things, stupid things. I, I don't know. Um, but uh, kind of weird to me, uh, you know, if it's just a Deadpool head. But again, that's what, based on the description, you know, it says premium interactive Deadpool head that speaks English. So, um, you know, like I said, kind of weird. But, and, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll withhold final judgment until I see more, see an actual image of what it is. You know, get a little more details. But just wanted to update you guys on that. It looks like some type of uh, Deadpool head is coming for the Marvel Legend roleplay uh, line from Hasbro. For you Stan Lee fans, Funko just announced they're doing another uh, pop vinyl figure of the legendary Marvel creator. This one is based on his Thor Ragnarok look when he was the barber, you know, and he was cutting Thor's hair with all the scissors and everything. So that one is up for pre-order now at places like our sponsor, Big Bad Toy Store. Okay, now switching gears to McFarland Toys. So one final update for you guys on the sp well, maybe one final, getting close. Um, in fact, as I'm uh, as you're watching this, the the spawn Kickstarter that McFarland's been doing will probably have ended as I'm recording this. There's about four hours left on the Kickstarter. 
but um, it is it has broken the three million dollar mark. So uh, I didn't think it was actually going to break three million, but but in fact it has. And McFarland has added uh, one additional accessory. He's now including a painted necro sword that um, will come with any version of the classic spawn figure that you get. You know, there's multiple options, but if you get any of the options with the classic spawn figure, you will now get the painted necro sword. Uh, originally they were doing an unpainted one to go with the artist proof version. Uh, you kind of knew they were going to do a painted version as well. So he went on and announced that. And then he's released some new images of the sculpts for the necro energy pieces. And there's three different versions of that. So kind of cool additions. And then I don't know if he's going to announce any more, you know, now that he's broken $3 million, I don't know if he'll do one last add on or something at the end here. If he does, I'll, I'll update you in a future video, but right now, uh, definitely it, it's broken the $3 million mark. So congratulations to Todd on doing that. I think that's a pretty big accomplishment, honestly. And then finally, I have some news for you guys on the NECA toys front. So uh, first of all, the next figure uh, in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Loot Crate bundles. If you don't recall this, uh, NECA has teamed up with Loot Crate. And actually, if you're not familiar, uh, l last year, the actual guy who, who or main investor in NECA toys is also the main investor now in, in Loot Crate. He actually pulled the company out of bankruptcy, Loot Crate, not NECA, um, pulled the company out of bankruptcy. And so essentially the guy who owns NECA now owns Loot Crate. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these collaborations. Um, from the Loot Crate standpoint, I think, you know, the NECA stuff is, is going to encourage more people to subscribe to the, to the bundles. And then from the NECA standpoint, uh, it, it just gives another distribution channel for, for, for NECA product. But, but they're doing a series of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crates uh, that were announced last month. And we saw the figure, each one will have a different figure in it. And last month we saw the one with uh, the Mirage Comics Shredder figure. And then uh, just uh, this week they announced uh, the one for, the, each one is themed. So you've got the Mirage comic theme, you've got the arcade theme, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle arcade game theme, and then the animated series theme. And then, so we knew uh, last month we found out that the Mirage comic theme crate was going to have the uh, Shredder figure from the comics. And then uh, we found out just this week that the arcade version is going to have this electrocuted turtle. So kind of interesting, uh, you know, from these images, it looks like it kind of glows in the dark, maybe has a little bit of transparency. If you've ever played the classic arcade game, you know, the turtles will get electrocuted and this is kind of how they look. So that's basically, it's not a figure that I necessarily think you have to have for your collection, but if you just like obscure type things like this, it might be of interest to you. Uh, each of these crates cost about 50 bucks, so it is kind of a hefty price for the figure, but still I think it's kind of a cool idea that they've done here. And then um, getting in, I'm going to talk about this more in just a minute, but uh, recently here Pixel Dan did an interview with uh, Randy um, via uh, Skype or video conferencing and um, revealed a lot of information that I'm going to go over here. but. In that interview, he went on, Randy went on, even though it hasn't been officially announced through Loot Crate, uh, announced that the figure, uh, the third figure that's going to be offered in the um, in the animated series crate is going to be uh, Rocksteady in a bunny suit. So we had known that um, if you get all three crates, if you purchase all three crates, there would be a bonus figure offered, which was said to be Bebop in a bunny suit. And these are based on uh, the classic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle episode titled uh, The Turtles in the Hair, where Rocksteady and Bebop dress up in these bunny suits. So um, they're doing both of them. And the, the Rocksteady is going to come, looks like it's going to come in the crate, the, the individual crate. And then if you want to get Bebop to go along with them, you're going to have to get all three crates. So that's how, pretty much how they've worked it. Okay, and then in other news, uh, so again, Pixel Dan did this interview and actually had quite a bit of uh, good information. The interview is about an hour and a half long. Um, so if you want to check it out, you, you can. I'll, I'll put a link to the story with the interview uh, so you can check it out if you haven't already. 
But a lot of interesting tidbits of information came out of the interview that I just kind of wanted to go over with you. So I already talked about the loot crate items. Um, he talks a little bit about uh, their San Diego Comic-Con exclusive offerings for this year. Still haven't revealed what, exactly what they're going to be. Um, kind of reiterating stuff that we already knew, that there's going to be four different NECA San Diego Comic-Con exclusives this year. Um, which obviously the convention has been canceled for this year due to COVID-19. So now they're going to have to uh, release these through some other way. Now he hasn't, again, he still hasn't given any kind of specifics of what the actual exclusives will be, other than one is almost definitely, in fact, I, I'm pretty sure he's confirmed somewhere on Twitter that one of them will be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle based. So, uh, and then the other three, I, I, I'm not entirely sure, but... But um, these are going in the interview. Basically, Randy uh, lets us know that they are looking to work. They're looking to offer them online, and then they're also looking to work with uh, some of their brick and mortar retail partners, most likely either Target or Walmart, and offer these at physical stores. So uh, I don't know exactly how if it, if all of them are going to be offered at, at one or both of these stores, or if some will be at the stores and some will be offered online. I'm not entirely sure. Those details have yet to be revealed. But but essentially, uh, what he said is they were looking at ways to make it so people could either buy it offline or go to a physical store and, and get them. So you know how many of these are producing, how hard they're going to be to get things like that. I don't know. Initially, when they talked about on Twitter about announcing these. Uh, Comic-Con exclusives. They said they were going to be making it, you know, made sure that they were going to make it available to everybody in the United States. They weren't going to be shipping internationally for these, but but they were going to, essentially, they had indicated that they were going to be hopefully producing enough that anybody wanted them would be able to get them. So we'll have to wait and see how that all pans out, but definitely uh, should be interesting. A lot of information on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle front for both their movie lines and their animated series lines. So just recapping what uh, the major points for the movie line so in that, uh, he confirmed that, again, the, the first movie figures uh, for uh, that will now be offered through Walmart instead of GameStop will start hitting shelves in June. And the first set that we'll actually should see is the Casey Jones and Raphael uh, two-pack uh, that we first saw at Toy Fair back in February. So that should be the first movie uh, figures that we see at Walmart. And again, those should start hitting shelves in June. Now, he goes on to say, um, I've mentioned this before, that the mask on the Casey Jones figure is not removable because they were not able to get the likeness rights for, from the actor. But he did reveal in the interview that they actually sculpted an unmasked uh, head sculpt for, for this figure. It's just because they were not able to obtain the rights to the actor, they weren't able to actually release it with, with the figure. So um didn't show it or anything but but i thought it was interesting that they actually did sculpt an, an unmasked head sculpt for that one that maybe sometime down the road will end up getting released i don't know but right now uh the two-pack is just going to feature casey jones with the mask on and the mask is not removable he then went on to say that um which i i've talked about that they're going to be re-releasing the four movie turtles that were originally released well originally released as san diego comic-con exclusives and then again released as gamestop exclusives now they're going to be re-released as walmart exclusives and they're going to be released as two packs and in the interview randy said the only real difference between uh, these turtle figures and the previous ones is these will have an additional headband each figure will have an additional headband that wasn't included with the original figures, so only a minor difference. If, if you've already got the uh, figures from GameStop or San Diego, there's probably not much need that you need to get them again. Besides the four movie turtles that are gonna be released as two packs, he also said there's gonna be a movie Foot Clan Army Builder pack. So uh, they're basically gonna offer those uh, movie foot soldiers in a, 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 a single pack which is cool, and they're hoping to include the weapons rack that came with the San Diego Comic-Con exclusive set last year um, that was not made available in the single release of the Splinter and the Shredder. So um, they are hoping to uh, put that in this Army Builder pack. So um, didn't see, it wasn't like confirmed, but, but again, said they were hoping to do that. He also indicated that there's going to be two additional two packs featuring figures from the first movie. He did not re reveal what they were. I'm guessing probably one of those at least is going to be a two-pack featuring Shredder and Splinter. The Shredder and Splinter figures that were already offered at GameStop and at San Diego last year. So I guess if you missed out on those, you will get an opportunity for that. Since they're doing the foot uh, 
pack as kind of like a single release, I, I wouldn't think they would do another Foot Soldier two pack, maybe. So I'm not sure what the second two pack would be. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. And then, of course, there's also the figures coming from the second movie, Secret of the Ooze, the Deluxe Super Shredder and the Toka and, and Raza two pack. And they, in the interview, he showed off some unpainted prototype images for that. Continues to look pretty impressive. Now, also to note that uh, this two pack is going to cost a bit more than the normal two packs, which are cost around fifty bucks. This one, because the figures are larger and everything, is going to cost in the neighborhood of sixty dollars. And then switching gears to the Target exclusive animated series line. So Randy uh, once again reiterated that Wave Three is going to be hitting shelves here pretty uh, soon. And the reason for the gap between uh, Wave 2 and Wave 3, Wave 2 came out around Thanksgiving last year, and now Wave 3 is just now coming out. And the gap is because of delays with COVID, and the factories overseas were celebrating New Year's during this time period and stuff, so they were closed down for that as well. So essentially, that's why the long delay. But Wave 3 is going to be coming out, and then Wave 4 is going to be coming out right after that. So while there was a big delay between Wave 2 and Wave 3, look for wave three and wave four to come out almost on top of each other and both of these waves will be available at both on the target website and on and at physical stores um, hopefully we'll see them in greater numbers than we saw with wave two uh, wave two does continue apparently to ship out at least like the rocksteady and bebop so if you've not yet gotten your hands on those you, there's still an opportunity to be able to do so at actual target stores so you don't have to go to secondary market prices but again, Wave 3 should be coming out soon, followed shortly uh, with Wave 4. And then Wave 5 will be out uh, by the end of the year. Um, didn't have a release date, but definitely we should say wave, see Wave 5 by the end of the year. And in the interview, uh, Randy goes on to say that by the end of the year, he expects there to be around uh, 40 different animated series figures available to folks. So uh, definitely uh, they are turning out quite a few different characters with the line which I think is cool. I agree. I know, I know I can see the comments now. Well, it'd be great if I could find them and I agree. And I think they are continuing to try and improve that so that people will be able to find these figures uh, more easily. Um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. And then also, um, while nothing is, well, first of all, you may recall the diorama that, that they had on display at, at uh, New York Toy Fair this past year. And that was kind of a modified a diorama to be more in keeping with the animated series. So uh, that they do plan on actually releasing for you guys to be able to buy. The original plan was they were going to make it first available at folks at San Diego Comic-Con this year. Obviously, with the convention not happening, that's no longer the case. So that the, the release of that is going to be delayed a little bit. But they still hope to have it out by the end of the year, uh, probably shortly after Series 5 gets released. And the idea being that's probably going to be released through specialty uh, retailers like a Big Bad Toy Store or what have you. So, um, but if you like those, you know, they did the previous diorama um, before and now they're doing this one uh, that they had on display at, at Toy Fair and that's uh, in keeping with the animated series. And then even uh, cooler is while this is not 100% at this time. Uh, they've be de basically been looking at ways to do additional kind of play sets or diorama play sets or what have you. And one of the ideas they have is that they're going to actually do the turtle sewer layer. So um, I think that would really be cool to see. And the idea being that the sewer layer would actually, uh, you could stack the, the building diorama on top of the sewer layer. So you have the building up top above ground, then you have the street level, and then below that you've got the sewer layer. So... Uh, if they're able to pull that off, I think it would be really cool. They're also looking at ways of doing a party wagon, the van. So um, vehicles are not out of the realm of possibility with the line. I wasn't sure if they were able to do vehicles with the licensing, you know, with Playmates and everything. But but it does, apparently, they are able to do vehicles, and that is something we could see down the road. So definitely liking uh, what I was hearing about the, the sewer layer and a and, uh, party van would be pretty cool as well. Now, in keeping with that, Randy did say that there's definitely some type of larger, more expensive item coming this year. He didn't say what it was. I mean, turtle related, but he didn't say it like, is it figures? Is it, you know, place? It didn't know. He just said it was a high priced item that was going to be coming to Target stores sometime around uh, November in time for the holidays. It's going to cost in the neighborhood of 100 bucks. 
And if that sells well, you know, that would prove to Target that uh, high priced items would, would, would actually move. And so that will make it much easier for them to get out things like a, a party van or, you know, diorama play sets or what have you. So, um, again, I have no idea what this large priced item that they're doing is going to be, but but should be interesting. And hopefully it will do well enough that that it allows them to do other things like like the vehicles and stuff. And then finally on the turtle front for quarter scale figures, they are continuing the quarter scale figures uh, for movie. They're going to be doing uh, Splinter and then uh, Casey Jones, which will be out uh, sometime next year. Um, so those are the next two movie quarter scale figures that they're doing. Uh, but again, those are not going to be out until 2021. And then for the animated series, they actually they're going to be doing the four turtles in the quarter scale. And the idea being that they're going to have interchangeable uh, face expressions that you can basically mix and match th with the various different figures. So each one you get will give you essentially additional facial expressions that you can use on all four figures. So um, if you're into the quarter scale figures, that, that definitely sounds kind of cool. And then just uh, real quick, a few other things they talked about outside of Turtles. So they did talk about some things like Predator and, and Aliens and stuff, but really not anything major that we hadn't heard before. But one thing they mentioned that Randy mentioned in the interview for you Jaws fans. Now, I, I talked about this around Toy Fair, that this was something that Randy was hoping to be able to do. And, you know, they're doing the the uh, eight inch cloth figures for the Jaws characters from the first Jaws movie. But uh, they are also looking to do Bruce the Shark. And this uh, they've been working on it. It's going to be, uh, looks like it's going to be around 30 inches in length. It's going to have articulated jaw and fins and realistic skin. And, and it's going to have some type of diorama type stand. So it looks like he's in the water. Uh, very elaborate. Now, because it's going to be elaborate and also probably going to be pricey, maybe in the neighborhood of like 200 bucks, uh, the price is not confirmed, but pro it's definitely going to be something on the pricier side of things. So uh, because of that, they probably are not going to be able to get something like that out at a Target or Walmart or even necessarily at an online retailer. So they may be looking for at, to something like crowdsourcing for that. So if you think you want a, a big giant Jaws figure to go along with those 8-inch uh, retro style uh, Jaws figures, uh, you might want to start uh, saving up a little bit of money. For you Godzilla fans, it looks like that line, at least for a while, is going to be coming out. They showed off a few Godzilla figures at Toy Fair, and those are still coming. Uh, maybe one or two other figures that they had in the pipeline. But because the license, the, the license uh, for the Master Toy license for Godzilla has switched hands... Um, the new uh, Master Toy license holder, I guess, really isn't looking to have any competition. So uh, for at least now, it looks like NECA's Godzilla line is going to be going on hiatus. Uh, so don't expect anything from the upcoming Kong vs. Godzilla movie for, for NECA. And then the final thing was Defenders of the Earth. So a lot of you guys have been asking me when those were going to be uh, released or up for pre-order. They showed those figures, the 7-inch scale Defenders of the Earth figures at Toy Fair. So in the interview, Randy says those are probably not going to be out until uh, next year. So um, don't expect them out this year. He didn't say definitely, but pretty much indicated that he wasn't because they've got so many other things uh, coming out this year that, that he didn't expect them to be released this year. So no specific release date, but definitely looks like those are going to be uh, uh, due out sometime next year. And just to recap, the figures they showed at Toy Fair included Flash Gordon Ming, his, you know, Flash Gordon's uh, bad guy, Ming, and then the Phantom. Those are the three probably most known characters that they showed. And then they also had on hand uh, Mandrake the Magician and Lothar. So the way they plan on releasing these when they do come out is they're going to release the first three figures, Flash Gordon, Ming, and the Phantom. Those will be the first figures that are released. And then they'll follow up. And they are hoping to have those figures available at either Target or Walmart. And then, um, assuming those figures sell well, then they would go on and release the Mandrake and Magi uh, Mandrake the Magician and Lothar at Target or Walmart, whichever one uh, was carrying them. Then they would go on and release the other two figures. If they don't sell well, I don't know if they'll move to something like an e-tailer or or what. I mean, I mean, I'm guessing the figures will also be available at e-tailers too. I don't think they're going to be Target exclusives. Maybe I don't know. We'll have to see. But. Um, 
but that's the plan is to release the first three figures and then if they sell well they'll release the second two figures and then they have other figures that they didn't show at toy fair that they have already sculpted so there are other characters in the works and then they randy went on to say even if the line does do well and, and sells well they would probably also branch off into other things like the flash gordon comics and the uh, old flash gordon animated series so um, again, if, if the line does well, they could definitely expand that out, out quite nicely. And one other thing Randy said, uh, for those of you, uh, apparently uh, stuff has started to show up at Walmart for NECA products, but if you really haven't seen much of the NECA stuff at Walmart, look for uh, more a larger number of Walmarts and, and the Walmarts to carry more NECA stuff by September timeframe. Okay, so that's it for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything I talked about in the comments section below. As always, subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Stay safe out there, and until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Hey, thanks for watching today's video, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And be sure to head over to the Toy News International and Marvelous News Message Sports Communities. It's a great place to talk toys and win cool contests like $100 store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. And remember, action figures are great.